Good afternoon, the news from HTV Wales. The jury has retired to consider its verdict in the trial of a pensioner accused of mowing down three of his neighbours with a van. Mold Crown Court has heard that 74-year-old George Suckley drove his van at the Bartley family outside their home in Wrexham. Paul Mewes reports. During the three-day trial, the court has heard that Suckley listed alleged complaints against his next-door neighbours in a diary. The Bartleys, he claimed, made his life hell, although there was no evidence of any wrongdoing. On a summer's morning last year, the jury was told Suckley snapped, driving his van at William Bartley, his wife Maureen and son Gareth as they cut a hedge outside their home. Witnesses told how he drove over the body of Gareth Bartley, who was lying motionless in the road. He suffered multiple injuries, including a broken back. His mother Maureen was also seriously hurt. Suckley said he hadn't intended to harm anyone, describing the incident as a blur. In his closing speech, prosecuting counsel Robert Trevor Jones said the jury will have to decide whether Suckley was truly in a trance or whether he had put on an act. But he said there was no evidence of a medical condition and none had been suggested. The defence said Suckley was a man of good character. He denies attempted murder and two charges of causing grievous bodily harm with intent. Paul Mewis, HTV News, at Mould Crown Court. Controversial plans which would have left Wales with just one fire service control centre are to be scrapped. The move comes after the government intervened in the row. The three existing centres in Hrill, Carmarthen and Pontaclean will now be allowed to continue in operation. Carol Green reports. Fire officers and unions united to oppose the plans to centralise fire control across Wales. Today, control centre staff who deploy appliances on 999 calls heard the reorganisation was being shelved. There had been fears over job losses and warnings that lives could be put at risk if local knowledge was lost. People could have lost their lives uh, because of uh, the rural areas and different sounding names and the actual time to turn out uh, fire appliances to incidents. Um, as far as we were concerned, that was not acceptable. But common sense has prevailed and uh, thank goodness that uh, the Welsh Secretary has intervened and we've uh, had a success. It's a double uh, whammy for Rail and for North Wales in that we are now having somebody from Wales on the Central Fire Brigade's uh, Advisory Council that will give um, Wales a say in Fire Brigade matters. The Home Office has now said that the three Welsh fire authorities should decide for themselves where the control rooms are sited. And for the time being, there'll be no change. Carol Green, HTV News. A French car component company has announced it's pulling out of Wales with the loss of more than 100 jobs. Frisia, which makes parts for vehicle seats, will close its factory in Tredega in the autumn. The company blames lack of demand from its two main customers, Honda and Rover, as the reason for the closure. An inquest has heard how a grieving mother drank herself to death after her baby daughter died in the Bristol Hospital heart operation scandal. Alison Martin was found dead at her home in Craigie near Cardiff. A post-mortem revealed her alcohol blood level was seven times above the drink driving limit. Mrs Martin never came to terms with losing her six-month-old baby Jenna, one of 29 babies who died after undergoing heart surgery at Bristol Royal Infirmary. Now, it generates £2 billion a year for the Welsh economy and supports 100,000 jobs. But tourism in Wales needs to change. That's the opinion of the Wales Tourist Board, which in its annual report out today says the industry must reinvent itself. It says short breaks which don't depend on our weather are the way forward. If you can't guarantee people the weather, you've got to give other guarantees and quality is the thing that people are looking for. So if you're able to offer the highest quality accommodation, cuisine, and also give people uh, things to do, reasons to come to Wales, which are not reliant on the weather, things like cycling, golfing, hang gliding, mountain biking, walking, all that stuff, is not so dependent on the weather as the seaside resort. A grandfather from Aberdare in South Wales has been invited to arrange his own funeral 40 years after his death. Undertakers from the co-op wrote to Tom Coleman, who would have been 100 if he was still alive. The letter was opened by his nephew. He says the co-op also wanted Mr Coleman, Coleman's current address. So he wrote back, pointing out that grave 84, row 6, Aberdare Lawn Cemetery, is where Mr Coleman is buried. 
A small village in mid-Wales is getting ready to receive a very special guest. During his four-day tour of Wales, Prince Charles will be staying at a country house in the close-knit community of Beriu. Our reporter Rob Shelley has been along to talk to some of the villagers. Prince Charles at last year's Royal Welsh Show. It's traditionally the climax of the Prince's annual tour of Wales. A more recent tradition, for the past six years at least, is that when the Prince wings his way back to Wales, he stays at Powys Castle. But not this time. Making a break with tradition, he's opted to be a guest at the secluded country house of Vinod Park in the close-knit community of Beriw, a couple of miles to the south of Powys Castle. It's believed Camilla Parker Bowles could also be visiting. He's no stranger to the village. He visited the church there for a Sunday service a couple of years ago before wandering round. First thing when he came into the village, he asked for all the barriers to be put down and he went to church with all the village people and he really mixed it in. You must think an awful lot of him. Yes, because I mean he's sociable with everybody. That's a very smart person. And just as he likes the village, the villagers like him. I think Barry is quite down to earth, really, and uh, I think he likes that as well. It's a change from his high flying life, I suppose. Behind the scenes, an awful lot of security preparations going on. Protocol dictates we can't tell you what sort of preparations those are. But one thing is for sure when Prince Charles comes back here to Barry, in a very real sense, he's coming back home. Rob Shelley, HTV News in Berrio. Cricket, it's the second day of Glamorgan's County Championship match against Northamptonshire at Sophia Gardens. After bowling out North Hands for 229 yesterday, Glamorgan started this morning on 39 for 2 and they've now lost another four wickets, I'm afraid. Matthew Elliott making 76, but Glamorgan still struggling on 165 for 6. Well, now to the story of Milo the Sheep. A sheep with an identity crisis. You see, Milo the Sheep thinks he's a dog, even down to daily walks in the park on a lead. Steve Taylor joined him and his very confused owners. This is Milo, and there's no question about it, is there? Milo is definitely a sheep. Trouble is, Milo won't believe it, even though the sheep can't convince him. When he was born, he wasn't very strong, and Angela Atkins and her husband John took him from their field back to their semi in Cardiff. Now, five months on, they've got a problem. We take him up every day, at least once a day, he comes back up to the fields. He goes over to the sheep, he butts some of them, he sniffs some of them, and then he walks back to us, and he stays with us for the rest of however long we're there for. And he insists on going home with them. They've sort of got used to him about the place now, though he's become part of the family. He even gets his daily walk. We started taking him for a walk because we were afraid of him putting on too much weight. And then he got more and more like the dogs, and now he refuses to go back to the sheep. <laughs> <laughs> I think he thinks he's a dog now. I really do. Because he gets brushed every day. He gets bathed every about once a month to keep him slightly tidy and he, he sleeps in the conservatory with the rabbit and the chinchillas so uh, <laughs> I think he's got an identity problem. But Angela's husband has, should we say, a more practical view of his lodger. I was a butcher for 40 years. I don't think Milo knew that. He'd fit a treat into your deep freeze and I've offered to make gloves and slippers out of his coat but uh, everybody looked at it disgusting. They said you couldn't possibly do that. Could, but, you, uh, and you couldn't? No. I look at it as uh, what price of divorce, so there's certain things you must tolerate, and that he, he's one of them. Steve Taylor, HTV News. Whatever next. That's it. I'll be back with a full roundup of all the day's news and sport. That's HTV News at six o'clock. <laughs>